Welcome to the garden. Today I'm going to be using a grass whip to clear weeds and to cut back long grass. These are a really great tool, kind of like a golf club, that you swing and they have a serrated blade down here at the bottom. I don't usually sharpen these. You can actually keep them sharp just by using them. But I got a great question in the comments on how you would go about sharpening one of these without the use of a file. Now if we can get the right angle, you should be able to see that the metal is actually shiny. And this is just from use on grass and weeds. So it actually gets rid of the rust and it can keep the edges fairly sharp. Definitely sharp enough to clear weeds. But today I'll show you a few tricks on how you can sharpen these if you need to. First off, you wanna make sure you have a nice pair of gloves. These can be fairly sharp, even if they don't look sharp. And they can get rusty as it's a fairly old tool. I'm not gonna to be touching the top of the blade at all. So we'll flip it over and we'll just sharpen the bottom. I've got here a few files. This is called a rasp. And the teeth on these, even on the small side, are way too big for sharpening a grass whip. Here's a more traditional file, and you can see the teeth on it are much smaller. Now something a little less common is this triangular file. This is actually made for sharpening saw blades. Something you are likely to have is sandpaper. Now this can work in a pinch, and I would probably just go over several teeth at once. You wanna make sure you get a firm grip on your tool. So I would rest it in between your legs like this so that you can kind of wedge it in place. This is very solid. It's not gonna slide and shift around. And whether you're using a file or your sandpaper, we can just go through and sharpen our teeth. We'll use our sandpaper here. Here we'll try our rectangular file. So it does work. It's just very slow and very tedious. You can see that shiny metal underneath. That's where we've removed the rust and hopefully sharpened that metal blade. But again, in my opinion, the best way to sharpen this is just by using it on weeds. Now some more safety tips here. You wanna make sure your area that you're going to use the grass whip on is clear so that you can get a free range of motion when we're swinging it back and forth. You also wanna make sure you wear closed toed shoes that's really important so that you don't nick your foot. And I actually prefer to hold this with my bare hands to get a better grip on the tool. Now, even though these are called a grass whip, grass is actually one of the tougher plants to cut back. But a really easy way to get through it is just to swing fast and hard. Another way I like to use the grass whip is actually clearing weeds amongst this long grass because this is a native grass that I've planted by hand. But you can see, we just need to go nice and slow and it'll go right over the grass. But if we do wanna cut the grass, we'll just increase our speed. Look at how well that cuts. And we are actually sharpening it just by using it. When the grass is this thick, the grass whip is really gonna struggle. So because it's so close to the trail, I'm just gonna uproot it and transplant it somewhere else. That'll make sure it doesn't come back. And then we can use it to fill in other spots of the garden. Wow, look at that, it's like sod. <laughs> I like a nice wide berth on my trails. I usually like to stretch out my arms and cut everything in that reach. Eventually these plants will just overtake the trail. And especially after a rain, things are really heavy and they sink down and they can really get in your way. Sometimes you can clear smaller branches with these. I was able to cut this little branch of buckthorn, but really anything thicker than this and you wanna get a pruners. And to keep the path clear, which is only about this wide, I will actually trim on the uphill side, especially. And I do like to do this later in spring so that the early spring flowers get a chance to bloom and drop their seed. Another more unconventional use for a grass whip is cleaning your gutters. 
kind of has that curvature, which helps you get into high spots like this. This particular gutter system often gets clogged, but the pitch of the roof is so steep I can't climb up there. And the height is just out of safe reach. So it's actually quite helpful. But you can use that hooked shape to get inside the gutter and push that material out. This was actually recommended to me in the comments from a viewer, so I really appreciate your suggestions. Just another awesome use for a grass whip. Really cool tool to have in the garden. I do often find these at garage sales, so keep an eye out for them there. You should also be able to find them at home improvement stores, and you can always search for them online. Just search for the term grass whip or swing blade. So I hope you found this video helpful on how to sharpen and use a grass whip. If you did, let me know in the comments or with a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.